It's not the fastest, nor does it have the best of shields. In fact, it does barely any damage at all. So why has the 100i captured the hearts of so many? The Origin 100i is not an RV with large thrusters taped onto the side. No, the 100 series is the everyday runabout for those with a more refined taste in ships. Hello folks, Space Tech here, and welcome to a buyer's guide and ship review of the 100i as a standalone ship as well as a starter pack. To contextualize the ship, I'll also be comparing it to the rest of the 100 series, the combat-driven 125A and the cargo-focused 135C. As always, I'll be diving deep into the numbers and statistics of each ship, so feel free to jump around to sections that interest you the most. Starting off with the tour of the ships. All three of the 100 series share the same basic silhouette and layout. Sleek lines and sweeping curves help you quickly identify these ships as ones made by Origin, the luxury ship manufacturer. A useful and unique selling point of these ships are these fuel scoops located under each wing. In fact, in all my time flying around in my starter 100i, I have never once had to refuel my hydrogen tanks, even after I had stopped crashing into the ground every few minutes. Moving along the front of the ship, we have a panel that will give us access to the radar, and another panel that will give us access to the quantum drive of the ship. Finally, around the back, we have the signature origin thrusters. Walking up the smoothly extending steps of the 100i, we see how Origin manages to convey luxury, even within such a small ship. There's a decent amount of room inside the ship to stretch your legs or sit on the bed during a long quantum travel. In here, we also have access to the rest of the components, neatly hidden behind these sliding panels. Behind the bottom door, we also have access to two SCU worth of cargo room, useful if you don't want your boxes banging around the cabin during flight, or to carry a couple extra passengers. Finally, we get to the jewel of the 100i, its cockpit. Here, the glass extends very far back into the cabin, granting that increased sense of space, or even just a great view as you get out of bed. While you don't get the edge of your seat dogfighting feeling that you get in a ship like the Mustang, the 100i's pilot gets a large field of view while still feeling as though they're being shielded from the extreme outdoors. Speaking of dogfighting, let's talk about weapons. As a point of reference, all the values I mention here will be assuming that hardpoints are equipped with laser repeaters. The 100 series of ships come with two gimbaled size 2 weapons, which would give you a sustained DPS of 420. If you're more confident in your aim, you can up these to fixed size 3s, which would give you a DPS of 458, or a 9% increase. Personally, I don't recommend this upgrade, because by the time you get accurate enough, you should have enough UEC saved up to purchase a more dedicated fighter in-game anyway. For some reference, here are the damage numbers for the starter ships around the same price point. As you can see, the 100 series definitely trends towards the bottom of the list when it comes to damage output. But how much damage can it receive? The 100 series of ships has room for one size 1 shield, which has 1500 HP by default. I would recommend swapping this shield out for the top of the line shields that have a shield HP pool of 1725. Starter ships usually contain one or two size 1 shields, which puts the 100 series in line with the less durable starters. Unfortunately, the same can be said about the hull HP, which has a total of 4,450 points with a body HP of 2,200. While these ships should be enough to handle low-level combat, the weak damage and durability mean that I would steer clear of trying to take on any significant opposition. If you did want a 100 series and were inclined towards combat, what advantage would the 125A give you? The most obvious is the difference in the missile loadout. This ship carries four more missiles than either the 100i or the 135c. It stores these missiles towards the rear of the ship in a hidden compartment that slides open when you put the ship in missile mode. The 125a also has the highest SCM speed and max speed out of all three ships. This means that the 125a is the ship to choose for cruising as fast as possible while maintaining maneuverability. While the 125A comes with better maneuverability than the 100i, it is actually the cargo-focused 135C that brings the highest turn rates out of the three. While turn rate is extremely important in a fight, perhaps CIG thought to give the 135C some tools to defend itself from pirates wanting to loot it. What makes the 135C the greatest target is that it has an extra 4 SU of cargo that is accessible through a ramp that lowers down at the back of the ship. With its cargo of 6 SU, you can max out at about 6,400 UEC per minute trading cargo. While this might not seem like a lot to an experienced player bringing in millions, this is good, safe money for a beginner just getting started who wants to avoid combat. In fact, the first type of mission recommended to new players are usually delivery missions. This is an area where the 100 series can truly excel. 
The fuel scoop system means that you can stay out in the verse as long as you'd like, without needing to check where the closest refueling station is. That peace of mind is something that just can't be measured on a stat sheet. In fact, if you were looking purely at the stats, then the 100 series of ships just doesn't stack up against the modern starter ships like the Avenger, Pisces, and the Cutter. No, what sets the 100 series apart are the intangibles. The great view from the cockpit and maneuverability of these ships mean that every hilltop and every outpost is going to be a joy to fly towards. The small footprint of the 100i also means that you can park it almost anywhere. Finally, the feeling of landing and opening up that wonderful sliding door just to take those first few steps down truly make you feel like you've been traveling in a ship a class above the rest. In my opinion, there's more to a starter ship than its raw numbers. This ship is going to be your introduction to the game and its universe. My very first ship was the 100i, and I don't think I'll ever forget the time I saw it standing in a forest or seeing Stanton as I logged back into its bed. For those of you who want a snub ship, well, you never really cared about the 0-60 to 60 of a Bentley anyway. Please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and tell me, would you ever pick up one of these ships? If so, which one?